Hi, I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. Today we're going to do some hose repair. Yeah, I got a couple of hoses, actually three hoses, that I need to repair. Come on along and I'll show you how I do it. The first type is the kind of hose that I used to repair 10 times a day when I worked at the foundry. Everything at the foundry operated by air. Uh, the squeezers, the rammers, the, a lot of the dumping equipment on the gray iron line. Almost everything had an air hose. And since they were rubber and working in a very hot environment, they kind of went bad quickly. I spent a lot of time just doing this, loosening up the hose clamp slide it down the hose a bit. Then, at the time I used a jackknife, but now I've got this nifty little tool. Uh, I got this at Harbor Freight. It was free. Yeah, it was, came out of the dumpster out back. Uh, it's got a little kink in the blade. Still cuts just fine. Takes that hose off quick and easy and a nice straight cut. Now I still use the jackknife to get the hose off of the fitting because the barbs make it so that it doesn't just slide off. I just take my jackknife and like I was peeling an apple, I just cut away the hose. Once I've done that, then I can just spin it right out of the hose and the barbs clear and everything looks good. Now, I'm noticing that this hose out here near the end has got some splits. And I've shortened this hose a good number of times. I have a feeling this hose is going to fail on me again fairly soon. That's okay. came from a garage sale. It was used when I got it. Now I just slip the barb in there, slide the hose clamp back up, take my screwdriver and tighten the barb. Now there are crimp-on kind of hose clamps. That's what we used at the foundry. It was a, a kind of like what you'd put on a bundle of steel or something. Had a little clamping machine that Pull the loops tight. You slip the loop over the end of the hose, slip the tail end of the hose clamp into the machine, and then just ratcheted it down. Then at the end of it, you'd flip it over and it had a little punch on the top, and you'd smack that with a hammer or crescent wrench. Yeah, I talk about everybody using a crescent wrench to work as a hammer. Did that for three years at the foundry. It works. You just have to file out the back end of the crescent wrench every once in a while where you beat it shut. Hopefully it's not going to do that when you're really needing it someplace. There, my hose is all fixed. Let's see if it holds pressure. Works just fine. Now you'll notice this copper line I've got on the end of this. If I had this in a factory, they would go ballistic. OSHA says that you cannot, absolutely cannot, have a line that doesn't have a bleed off on it. Now why is that? There's a good reason for it. People are stupid. Not you. Just people in general. There's always some clown that likes to goose people with a hose. Well. When I worked at the foundry, the air hoses out in the maintenance shop had 150 PSI in them. My compressor is set for 150 PSI. When you goose somebody with an air hose, you run a real risk. There was a young lady back, well, let's see, it would have been back in the 60s, back when I started. Uh, some clown goosed her with an air hose. 
and shot the air. It exploded her colon and killed her. Now, that's not something we want to have happen to anybody. And because people come up through the ranks, everybody starts somewhere. Not everybody understands that. So OSHA said, if you're caught with an air hose like this in a factory, you get a big fine. I don't know what the fine is anymore. It used to be quite substantial. Of course, substantial in the 60s was a lot less than what it is now. But the danger is real. You don't want to goose somebody with an air hose. Same reason you don't blow off stuff off your clothes with an air hose. Say somebody's been using this air hose and they drop it. And the end of it goes in the dirt. Now this is turned down to just 80 PSI because I've got a regulator on it. It's the one I use for the plasma torch. You have dirt in the end of this hose and you hit it with 150 PSI, it comes out like a rocket. Back when I was young and dumb, but I was working with people that were old enough to know better. If we took a piece of 7 16 hydraulic line, that's a bore of 7 16 and then we took a fine thread 7 16 bolt and cut off just the threaded portion and slipped it down that piece of uh, 7 16 steel line and put 150 PSI on the back of it, it would shoot through a piece of 3 quarter inch board. Yeah, literally. Through. We thought it was great fun. I was young enough not to care, not old enough to know better, uh, but the other people who were with me were, but you know, it's the foundry. We went out to the cupola and grabbed a bag of tin. Now the tin came in, in the form of shot, a little teardrop shot, and they used that as an inoculant in the iron. So it was about the size of, oh, say, birdshot, but it was little teardrop shapes. It wasn't round balls. Still, we took a piece of paper wad and put it down that 7 16 tube, and dumped some tin shot down the thing and put another wad in front of it. And then we uh, went mouse hunting. Now there were always rats and mice in the maintenance shop because it was a foundry. And we shot all the mice that were in the maintenance shop with that uh, tin shot and killed them all. Had a lot of fun hunting. So anyways, be cautious, don't do something stupid, and that's an easy way to fix your air hose. The other thing that you can do is you can fix garden hose. Now I know garden hose is cheap. Everybody gets garden hose, right? If you go to the hardware store or the grocery store even, you can buy garden hose. About 30 bucks for a coil of 25 foot to 50 foot, depending on how good a hose you get. And that's okay. If you want to spend your money on replacing garden hose, just fine. Buy the cheap stuff. It'll last you maybe three or four years start shredding up and every time you pull it, it folds over and kinks. Well, that drives me nuts. I'm used to working places where they had hoses that didn't kink. You know, we spent the money and bought the hose because we didn't want to drag it out 100 foot across some building and then have it kink 100 foot away. But, every once in a while you run across a piece of hose that does that. There are different kinds and brands and levels of garden hose. This is the garden hose from our backyard. And it has one fatal flaw. If you bend it, it kinks. It doesn't coil up. I mean, it'll go quite a ways before it kinks, but it kinks. And you know, you pull the hose off the rack and walk out, get to the end of it, the end of the hose is kinked. You gotta go back and take the kink out. Kind of annoying. Well, there's kind of hose that doesn't kink.
or at least it takes a lot more to kink it. This kind of hose will eventually kink, but you pull it around pretty tight bend. It's not rubber, it's a vinyl kind of hose, but it works pretty good. Big thing for me was price. Price is always important to me because I'm a tight wad. Always have been, always will be. This kind of hose costs $84 for 100 foot of it. But if you keep your eyes open, you can find some for a lot less. I found this hose, two guesses where I got it. And the only problem it had was the ends were cut off. That's not a problem. I have skills and training that lets me take care of those kind of issues without any worries. After I picked up this hose, I stopped down at the hardware store, about a block down the road, and picked up a green thumb hose end mender for three quarter inch male and female clincher style repairs, damaged hose ends. And cost me four dollars and a quarter. Four dollars and a quarter, eighty-four bucks. Okay. I'll go for seventy-nine dollar savings. To fix this hose and put new hose ends on it, following the directions, I cut the end of the hose off. Then I put the hose end into the hose. kind of with a screwing motion, you start it into the hose and push it down until the hose is all the way up inside and the barb is completely seated in there. Then you just take a pair of pliers or a hammer and pull this down. Vice grips, pretty much anything, but I have a pair of channel locks so I'm going to use them. And these aren't channel lock brand, they're a knockoff. But they work quite well, and my channel locks are downstairs. Just pick two opposite barbs and kink them down. And go on around and do the next one and the next one. And the next one. So on all the way around the hose. Now this one, because of the size of the hose, I have to come around and, and take another bite on it and hit it again. Now I don't want to punch that all the way down through, but I want to make sure that it seats into the hose. No point cutting the hose in half, just seating the barb in. There, that's gonna work just fine. That's one end done. That's probably going to outlast me. I prefer the brass ends on the hoses. Makes them a little bit more tough. They don't crack when you pull on them. And that's how you fix a hose, garden hose. Now you don't have to buy a new hose and put ends on it. You can take your old hose that has a bad end on it or a cut in the hose. If your hose is just cut, they make one like this that's just double ended. And you can slip one hose in on one end of the barb and the other hose on the other end of the hose on the other barb and crimp it down and take that hose that had a hole in the middle of it 
And rather than using hydraulic tape or water tape or air tape, the guy I used to work with uh, at the foundry said he had miracle tape. And since I was young and didn't know him that much, I said, oh really, what is it? And he pulled out a roll of uh, 3M electrical tape, vinyl electrical tape, and said, hydraulic tape, air tape, pneumatic tape, and electrical tape, four in one. Later on, I realized what he was doing when I had to go back and uh, cut out the section of taped up hose that he'd put in and put a new hose barb on it and put two hose clamps on it and fix the hose or replace the hose entirely. He would rather pull the hose up, wrap tape around it, and then walk away because he didn't have to do a whole lot of work. Now, there's nothing wrong if you're in the middle of something. Say you were at the foundry. You had a load of castings in the dumper and they were hung up because the dumper wouldn't complete the cycle without that hose being fixed. Sure, wrap a piece of tape around the hose, get the hose to hold together long enough to get that mess cleared up and then go back and fix the hose. Don't just put the tape on it and then leave it for the next guy because it's going to fail in about six hours, halfway into the next guy's shift. So instead of uh, you fixing it once, he's going to fix it again and you're going to have to clean up all that mess again. Not a good idea. I was able to do that because I got a couple of sections of hose from the dumpster over at Harbor Freight. I can uh, afford to chop up a little bit of it and throw it away. If you have any suggestions for a new video, question. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. You know I read them all. Thanks for watching. So I hope you learned something. And if you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. You know I read them all. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.